Here is what a potential EVE setup could look like. I've got an MCU here. I'm using an ESP32 S3. I've wired SPI to this display assembly. This is just a breakout board here. It's a Reverdy display and the EVE GPU is right here. So as you can see, like the MCU is communicating over SPI with like the EVE chip and the EVE chip is connected to the display with like a parallel RGB connection. So you can imagine it would be useful in a project to use this simpler interface with only a few wires instead of, um, you know, 24 or 32 parallel RGB wires from an MCU to a display. In this uh, widgets demo, you can see that one of the scales is missing, one of those gauges. If all three are enabled, unfortunately the display list runs out of capacity, so I've disabled it. There is a limit to how much can be on the screen at once, and that third scale exceeds it, so simply removing it was enough to get under the display list limit. You can also see in the chart at the top, when we get to it, it's missing some graphics. Triangles aren't supported fully with EVE yet. It's a future improvement. LVGL 9.4 has just been released and it includes a new renderer for the EVE external GPU. Now, this is a series of chips that is typically embedded in a display assembly and receives high level drawing commands over SPI as opposed to uh, streams of pixels so you're able to achieve a much higher frame rate. LVGL translates its draw tasks into these EVE drawing commands and it allows you to use LVGL UIs as is on uh, EVE displays. Uh, I'm going to show how you can use an EVE-based um, display with uh, any MCU. In particular, I'm using uh, ESP32 S3, but it doesn't have to be uh, any particular MCU at all, uh, just as long as it has SPI. The first thing I do is clone LV ESP IDF, and then I delete this IDF component.yaml so that we can use our own version of LVGL here. I create this components directory and then clone LVGL into it. Uh, then I make, I add these requirements to the CMake lists. Uh, in the configs, I enable Eve. Uh, you can specify your Eve generation. It's two, three, or four. You can find information about which value corresponds to what online. Um, I'm going to leave this as the default and you don't need very much memory. Um, I rewrote the main file. Um, you create a tick callback which is typical LVGL and then you uh, initialize your SPI. Um, you can use 20 megahertz reliably for the SPI clock speed. Uh, you define this uh, SPI operation callback. It will control the power down pin, the chip select pin, and send and receive SPI. Uh, you need to uh, declare your display parameters. Uh, you can find those in the data sheet for your board. Uh, and sometimes you can find them in other libraries that have like large databases of like display parameters for popular boards. Uh, you create the display with the params and um, SPI callback. Uh, you can create the touch in device, input device. Um, if your touch controller uses um, some 
different parameters, like it's resistive um, or it has some unique uh, I squared C address, uh, you should run this to specify the correct values for that. Um, then you create your LVGL UI and call the timer handler in a loop and upload the program. I also wanted to mention some important limitations that you should know about. Um, there is a limit to how much can be rendered in one frame at once. Um, you will often reach this limit if you use a lot of text. So it's important to um, limit how much text your UI uses while using Eve, unfortunately. Um, Something else to know is that images and fonts are uploaded to Eve um, at runtime, and there's a finite amount of RAM on Eve. So um, as the UI is running, assets will be uploaded, and as long as the total amount of assets, so images and font glyphs, does not exceed one megabyte, uh, it will automatically manage the memory and upload the fonts and images on demand. To get this debug output, I have gone into this file and enabled RAMG debug, and I've commented out this extra logging um, for information that's not quite as important as the actual RAMG used. You can uh, pre-upload assets if you want. 99% uh, of the time you will not notice glyphs being uploaded, but for large images the rendering might stall for the very first time an image appears on the screen. Um, so for these, you can upload images and also glyphs if you wish. There is a low-level API for controlling Eve uh, manually um, for register values. It can be useful for setting up the touch controller if it's special or other things like special screen rotation. Um, but most of the time, screen rotation is supported um, automatically. Um, and the final thing to mention is that there is a direct frame buffer driver for EVE and LVGL as well. Um, uh, we're keeping it just because it might be useful for some people.